disappointed uh, as a program. <coughs> Put ourselves in, in a place in the second half where we had opportunities to win the game and, uh, and weren't able to get it done. I want to thank all the people that came to High Point Solutions Stadium today. I thought the, the crowd was tremendous. I thought they did a great job. And I, and I want to thank them for staying through that game. They helped us when we were in the midst of that comeback. Uh, it fell a little bit short. Questions? Kyle, you lost uh, two touchdowns on penalties and committed 11 penalties. Can you? Is that simply the game right there? It's disappointing. It's disappointing. You know, then the players who got called for those penalties you know, are experienced guys. You know, Justin Goodwin and Chris Muller, I mean, those are those are the core of our team. Um, so we got you know, to look at them on film and make sure we correct whatever there is to correct after we see them on film. But I think the turnovers, to me, are, are an even bigger factor. Now, you get penalties and take away touchdowns, certainly that's a, that's a huge, huge impact on the game. But the turnovers, to me, are the first place I look. How would you see on the Washington State's last drive there? Where, where the breakdown maybe? I thought they did a good job. You know, they did a nice job of, of taking you know, what we gave them and completing the ball. And, and all day, really, we didn't do it. We didn't really have an effective pass rush all day. We weren't really able to get that quarterback off the spot. And that's. That's one of the things you have to do. You, know? you understand when you play a team like this that they're going to they're going to move the ball. They're going to have passing yards. That's that's part of their system. Uh, but if you can't disrupt the quarterback, it's really hard. Kyle, what's your initial assessment of Chris Aviano and how he played? <clears throat> he got better as the game went on. Uh, I thought there were some shaky points in, in the first half, uh, for sure. Some uh, maybe first game start jitters. Maybe I don't know. You'd have to ask him that. You'll have a chance to do that. Uh, but I thought he got better as the game went on. And uh, plays with what he played in the second half. I know you said you didn't want looking over your shoulder. Was there ever any thought to making a change when things were going a little rough in the first half? No. No. Kyle, how, how unsettling does it feel to kind of, it's either, you know, to come out of it with that many questions, maybe of your veterans and mistakes and this kind of thing? Do you feel like there's an awful lot to address coming out of a game like that? It's not unsettling. I don't know that I would use the word unsettling. Um, every game, whether you win or lose, there's a lot of things that you address on Sundays. You know, it's a... It's a more enjoyable experience for everybody when you're one and up, but um, but when you're not, it, it, it stings. It hurts. And we're going to look at this game tape, and you know, there's there's some some great things about this game that you don't feel great about because you didn't win. You know, I thought we did an excellent job of running the ball as the game went on. I thought our punter did a nice job. I thought Kyle Federico did a good job. Uh, Janarian's effort was spectacular, uh, but none of those things feel very good you know, when when you're not one and up. Cal following up on Janarian's effort, the two kick returns, and then obviously he had a couple fourth, he had a couple catches on fourth down. And all. is this kind of, I guess, the, him taking the next step, his development into a really elite player? He's been a factor for us on special teams. Uh, he had a great training camp in terms of catching the football, and I thought we saw the fruits of that today. You know, five catches, 65 yards. Uh, we had the one run on the uh, on the sweep we handed him for 21 yards. So uh, he had a big impact on this game for sure. And, and that's what we expect. You know, when we recruited them, that's what we expect. Kyle, the play, um, the timeout you had to call before the field goal attempt, <clears throat> what happened there? Was it, you had too many men on the field? Correct. Did you have, was it the 12th guy trying to run off and you didn't think he would make it off in time? Or do you recall specifics? I don't recall specifically, but we had too many on the field and I, I did not want to give him an opportunity to get a first down. And, and then we did it. We, at that point, put house block on to see if we could block it. But, but yeah. You know, we, we had some different personnel groupings today on defense to try to match up with this offense, and we didn't do a very good job starting with me first in terms of coaching those when we got to the special teams to make sure we had the right people out there. It cost us a timeout. And, and not a stretch to say those timeouts would have been valuable. Down They're always valuable. Coach, on the last play of the game, did you guys draw any plays up for that return, and is, did you execute the play you drew up? Was there any thought about maybe fair catching? To save the 13 seconds that you had on the clock. No, we had a play that we had, we had practiced. That was the play we were in. Kyle, you guys were exceptionally good last year in close games. Obviously, this was a close one that went the other way. Is it s as simple as turnovers, penalties, mistakes you weren't making last year that this that made today? Uh, turnovers is the first place I look you know, for sure. Um, penalties when you when you have scores taken off the board on penalties, it, it's. It's hard to overcome that. <coughs> Coach, well, when was the last time you felt that you were, have you ever seen your defense give up over 500 yards of total offense to a quarterback here at Rutgers? Well, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the statistics. You know, I, 
I thought the defense at times during the game did a nice job of keeping the ball in front of them. You know, they had an 11 play drive that we stopped on downs. A seven play drive we stopped on downs. An eight play drive we stopped on downs. So, I, you know, I thought at times today we played good defense, but at the end when we needed a stop, we couldn't get it. How do you fix the penalties? What's that? How do you fix the penalties? Uh, you get better as a football team. You go back to practice and you, you continue to focus on it. It's not something we don't focus on. Um, to me, the, the penalty issue is the scores coming off the board. You know, when you look at penalties over time, you're going to see a lot of highly penalized teams that win a lot of football games. But, but when those penalties come in, in critical areas <laughs> on scoring plays, in explosive plays, those are not you know, four or five yard plays. Both of those scoring plays were explosive plays. Uh, it, it really hurts. Kyle, you mentioned the turnovers uh, a couple times. Chris was responsible for two of them with the interception and fumble. How concerned are you with his turnovers going forward? I'm concerned with turnovers in general. And the, the guys on the field have to value the ball. You know, the turnover on the pass was, was a poor decision. Uh, the one on the fumble was when he was trying to throw away and the ball slipped out of his hand. So it's a, I think we'll be able to get that corrected. Uh, but the guys on the field need to value the ball and need to protect the football. What was his injury after he dropped him for a first down for first quarter? I'm sorry? What was the injury of um, Chris's when he was running for a first down for first quarter? We'll put out an injury report on Monday. Okay. Kyle, what was it like, the motion of that? I guess you took the lead with a minute and 40 seconds to go, and obviously everybody's really excited, but they had a job to do at the same time. What was it? It was wild upstairs. What was it like down there? Oh, it, was an, it was an emotional game. I mean, I, it, both those teams really, really battled, and I... I certainly should give a lot of credit to, to Mike Leach and his football team and, and the way they fought. And I'm proud of the way our team fought. I'm not proud of how we did it all the time, but I'm really proud of, of how hard they fought in that game. And I thought both, both teams really competed and it created a really exciting second half. Um, there's always going to be emotional swings in a close football game, and you have to be able to, to refocus and do your job. And it's, it's, it's one of the things as, as we coach players through their careers that we try to emphasize. Two more questions. Kyle, you said use that word galvanize, which obviously meant a lot to you. Um, was there any chance of kind of you know getting through that first one when you guys were under a lot of questions from the outside and maybe any kind of a letdown after that, do you think? Did it have any kind of a carry carryover or I didn't feel that way. No, I didn't feel that way. I didn't I didn't feel like we played particularly good football on offense in the first half. You know, just after that first drive on defense I thought we settled down and did a pretty good job in the first half. Um, but I think a a galvanized football team is able to perform in the second, or compete in the second half the way we did. Now, as we go forward, you know, we have a lot of football left to play this year. We got to, we got to do it better. We got to do it with more precision. We got to do it with more details. We got to protect the football better. Uh, those are the things we'll be working on this week. Kyle, did you have any contact with President Barchi or the Board of Governors after its meeting on Friday? I have not. Thank you.